All right, so uh, we have a little bit of an update. Libkit. Okay, Libkit, uh, we now have a version with 8 gigabyte RAM for people who want a ton of RAM for their Raspberry Pi 4. Um, Raspberry Pi 4s are a little bit tough to come by right now. Uh, we also have the kit available, of course, without a Raspberry Pi. So if you have one already, you can yeah. get one. Do that. Believe me, we, we, have, we order these as quickly as we can. Next up. Next up, we have a 40-pin flex cable. Uh, and this 40-pin flex cable is on its own quite handy whenever you need an FPC. But what it's really useful for is when you use it with the next four products, which are uh, these FPC to 40-pin header adapters. So let's just click through them, and then I'll show them. So basically, we've got it's an FPC on one You want to do this. You want to do this. Because actually, you came up with this idea, by the way. I don't know. This is your this is your fault. You said, hey, you know, with the Pi 400, it would be really cool if there was like some way you could get a very flexible cable, more flexible than the GPIO yeah. out. The remember, reason I need that? yeah, the mm -hmm. reason I needed and wanted this is because we were working on the cyber deck. Yeah. And you could do a hinge system and have this as a monitor and more. Or have it mounted even elsewhere, even farther yeah. away. And the GPIO cables we have, and I'll show one on the overhead when we do this, they're kind of chunky. What's nice about this is that you pick and choose the two pieces. What do you want? You want right angle or straight? You know, like this is pointing out, this is pointing up. Do you want socket? Do you want male headers? And because it's reversible, you, you pick which two ends you want, and then you get the flex cable in between, and here it is plugged into a Raspberry Pi 400, or you can use it with a Raspberry Pi 2, 3, 4, whatever, mm -hmm. zero. You mix and match, create your own cable, and then you can even use an extender with it. So let me show it on the overhead because there's, there's a few different options. So starting off, I've got a Pi 400 here. And yeah. with this one, I picked this uh, plug yeah. to plug in. And so that's what I want to do. I wanted to be able to have a flexible cable right. and then be able to do anything I wanted. And then this is the sense hat. Plug. And I like yeah. this because it's rainbow, so it's like, ooh, it's working, right? And yeah. I even have an extender. So I even have a flex cable extender coming out here. So you can, look, technically you're not supposed to make these cables that long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh, but whatever, we're punk. We know the rules, so we love to break them. You can go a meter, really. Go for it, meter, two meters. As long as you're willing to understand that the other side, you know, if it's very timing specific, you're going to need to just uh, be wary of that. But you see, it's like, you know, you, you pick and choose which ends you want. And then you just put the cable in. You, you know, the flex cable attaches in. And then the only thing to watch out for is you want to look at your board and trace out which is pin one because things can get flippy floppy. It's very easy to, to get reversed um, because it is, it, it will let you be reversed. So just think carefully um, and then trace it out. I use my finger, to be honest. I look like which is pin one and then I, I trace it and I'm like, that's pin one and then I, I plug it in. So. You know, I'll try. I'll see if I, I plugged it in right. No, see, I got it wrong. It's this way. There you go. Now it's rainbow. Right. So just uh, just be aware of that. Um, so you've got uh, socket style, um, and you've got uh, header plug style, and we've got right angle and straight out. You know, it's, a, it's basically every everything you could possibly want. And um, and then the flex cable, and then we have the extensions as well. So Go to town. This is, you know, normally you would use something like this. This is like the normal IDC cable that we use. And these are great, right? Nothing wrong with these. But you see, they're chunky. They're, it's like, it's like oh, I want to make them flexible. They're not that flexible. Not as flexible as uh, FPC cables. Okay. Ready? Next up. Okay. Next up. Ooh, this is great. So we've got uh, these awesome kits. Hold on. Let me move. So the first one is the robot. So this is Scout Makes, um, and they are they come on the show and tell, and they showed their kits, and we're like, yeah, we'll, we'll stock your kits. So there's two kits that we're carrying of theirs. There's the FM radio kit, and there's the robot kit. So let's start with the robot kit, okay. uh, which is this one. Okay, so the robot kit, it comes with um, a bunch of... Gonna, here, you're on the overhead. So yeah, 3D it. printed. Okay, hold on. Because this is going to spin around, so i got to be careful here. Focus lock. Okay, so this is a Bluetooth, uh, you know, it's got a battery. It's a Bluetooth um, board with an OLED and then two uh, little Metal Gear servos, and it says robot ready, and it's got cool LEDs. So I can use this phone. It's going to be like, 
to your phone. So then I can go over to Blue for Connect. And then it shows up as a circuit pi. It's running circuit Python. I connect to it. And then under the controller, I can go to the control pad and I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to press this and it spins. And if I pressed up and down, it would fly off the table. So I'm not going to do that. And then you can have it, uh, it makes little beeping sounds. It has little songs and it changes colors. And this is just the demo it ships with. So you can program this all you like. I just love how cute it is. I love that it spins in a circle. Um, it's really nicely made. It's got really good motors. This is the motor kit. Circuit Python. And it's circuit Python. It's Circuit-by-thon. basically a, a Bluetooth NR52840 development board. Circuit Python. Um, with Circuit Python. Okay. okay. And then the second one that it is, is hold on, let me get the second board. One moment, I apologize. Well, I'm showing pictures of it while Show you're pictures while you do. The second one is an FM radio kit. Um, and this is also Bluetooth uh, NRF52840. Um, and it plugs into this uh, radio um, control board with it's got buttons on it and it's also got an OLED. So let me turn this one on. And then I've got these uh, speakers. I'm going to speaker here. And I'll plug this in. And it plays radio. It's an ad, but uh, usually it's music, but I'm actually kind of glad it's not music glad, because yeah. uh, YouTube would uh, get upset at us. But it's an FM radio, so you can tune it and you can use the buttons to change your tuning. Um, it's like a fun way to like just like make your own DIY FM radio. And then, of course, there's also Bluetooth, so you can control it over Bluetooth. I will note, it doesn't do, blue, doesn't do Bluetooth audio. So in case you're wondering, oh, can you take the FM radio and do the Bluetooth audio? No. Yeah. You can control it over Bluetooth. And uh, I goofed on the uh, order of these, but we have additional um, ones of these that should have went back. Oh, that's okay. We should, we should, we should basically yeah. the same thing. Okay. And then here is um, okay, cool. the next new product. Next new product. There's two products. Um, these are camera mounts. These are just hardware. I want to clarify. You don't get the Raspberry Pi with them. You don't get the camera with them. You don't get the quarter. You don't get the quarter. You don't, you don't get, get the, the tripod. tripod. You don't get the cable. It's just the camera mount that lets you connect one of the new Raspberry Pi HQ high-quality cameras to a Pi Zero or... Uh, we have the larger version to like a Pi 4. And I want to note, the one I really liked here, it comes with a little level at the top. I just thought it was like so slick, right? You have a little level so you can get a really, it, it's not only a nice mechanical kit, um, but I like that extra touch of, of making it easy to to get your your tripod all leveled out. So um, mm-hmm. check that out. It's inexpensive and great add-on to a camera and a recipe pie. Next up at the Star Show tonight, besides you, Lady at our, our community, our Adafruit team, our customers, is the DVI Breakout. Woohoo! Well, I think it's exciting. This is a pretty cool board. So let me also plug this in. Oh my god, I have so many cables. Where does this cable end? Okay, so the DVI Breakout is kind of what it sounds like. It's just a breakout board for a DVI connector, which uh, you might also call an HDMI connector, but for reasons we're going to We're call not going to call it that. We're not going to call it HDMI, we're going to call it DVI. So this Someone will say that oh. looks like an HDMI cable being plugged into it, and I would say, yes, that's true. It's going into an HDMI monitor. Yeah, I'd say that's true. And so um, I'm going to do a little bit of a split screen. So you're saying, okay, well. So what? It's, so, so what so is this DVI? So where does that Wait, HDMI at, cable lead to? Where is it going? To here. This is, this is live this is coming off the device right so now. So if you second. want your Raspberry Pi Pico to make ebon heads bounce around, yeah. this is your bag. You want this breakout. Uh, I made this specifically because I saw Ren, who is a developer for the Raspberry Pi Foundation, was doing a lot of really cool demos with generating DVI signal from a Raspberry Pi Pico, an RP2040, which I just thought was just hilarious because it's like a total yeah. abuse of the microcontroller. And like I said, we're punk. We know the rules, so let's break them. Right. Uh, you're not supposed to do this. But he did it anyway, or they did it anyways. So uh, when I saw that, I was like, oh, it's so cool. I want to play with that. And that's when I realized uh, we don't have a DVI breakout in the store. I was like, oh, that could be a really handy thing if you want to. This is a, a DVI or HDMI source device, so it does not have the EEPROM. Um, so if you're looking at it, you're like, why is the EEPROM not soldered in? That's for if you want to use it as a sync device, we, which we may also create a breakout that is a different product that has the source EEPROM that you could reprogram with the EID. This is for, sorry, for the sync. This is the source. So this is for generating signal into an HDMI monitor. There's more demos than this, but I just thought this one was the funniest one. 
um, because it's just ebon heads bouncing around. So uh, you can change this to be your own head, I guess. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward. You've got your uh, you know HDMI compatible um, mechanical connector soldered onto a board with uh, two. 200-ish ohm resistors in series for the eight data lines and then ground is pins it, in between. Is it DVI-D or DVI-I? This is D. This is digital okay. video. Um, and then I also wanted to uh, do a shout-out. So Tinkering Tech is in the chat. Thanks, Adafruit, for letting me sell my kits on your platform. Scout Mix and we was, sold out. Scout Mix was born last year during the pandemic. is named after my daughter, Scout. Hope to get more little girls and everyone into STEM. Thank you. Okay. No, thank you. Um, you came on the show and tell. We chatted. Um, you showed your projects. We got together, and now you're selling stuff on Adafruit. And someone said in the chat why this was going on. As we were showing all these things, they said, you know what? Adafruit just became Radio Shack. And I take that as a compliment. And that is our new products of the week this week. New, 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 new.